Welcome to the Body Project Podcast. I'm your host, Katherine Tanaka, a fitness expert and mindset coach, and the host and producer of this podcast, the Body Project Podcast. I help busy working women look and feel their best so they can live their most confident lives. In this podcast, we'll explore how physical and mindset practices can support you in becoming your most confident version of yourself. I believe that we can have it all. We can have our cake and eat it too. My hope is that this conversation shows you how simple habits can help you feel incredible and guide us to personal self-mastery. Join me as we explore how to live and feel our best in this lifetime, because this isn't a dress rehearsal. Welcome to today's conversation. At the time of this recording, it is in the middle of August. This summer has gone by so quickly, but I think regardless of when you're listening to this episode, this is a very important conversation. We are stepping into the series of Frumpy to Fit. This is fat loss for women over 40 in perimenopause, and we're going to all talk about all the things that you need to know about getting fitter, feeling leaner, maintaining your physique, or at least feeling good through those perimenopause years, 40 and over typically. So this is really designed for busy women in their 40s and 50s, even late 30s. So if you know of any busy women that can be moms, that can't be moms, that are going through this kind of interesting time that isn't talked about enough, right? Our late 30s, typically after having kids in our 40s and our 50s, that you could, you think this podcast could benefit them, please do refer them to this podcast, share it on your social media, share it with those that you love and know that this could land for. So today we're going to talk about the three simple things that you can do to start right now to reset your habits and to kickstart, kickstart your fat loss. And even though we're talking about this in the context of being August, right? Ramping up to September, this can be applied and applicable to any time you listen to this episode. So oftentimes September is kind of like a January in fitness, right? After the summer break where we have hopefully more relaxed schedules, and we're able to enjoy a little bit more than typically from September to June, summer is a great time, right? Summer is a great time to connect more with others, to slow down, hopefully a little bit, to take more vacation time. And especially if you have your kids, it's kind of a built-in time, right? They are typically either at home or at summer camps, or like my kids, they were at sleepover camp for a month. And it's a time to hopefully rest more and recharge. One of the things that I see often in my busy women is that not only is it time to recharge, but it's also a time that they are in burnout. It actually is this opportunity of slowing down, but it is this time that they are almost forced to slow down, that they go full tilt all the way up until July. And then they feel like they can get a chance to breathe. So let's talk about the things that you actually need to know if you're looking to ramp up your practices and get back on track for yourself. I was just talking to a client this morning who, even though August is quite chaotic, September is the time that she's going to get back into routine, get back on her nutrition practice and get back to feel like there is some more consistency in her life. And so we were talking about some of the things to really think about to make sure that you're resetting your habits over the summer. And this can be any time of year to reset your habits and to kind of kickstart that fat loss and kind of the things that you need to think of to just know that you're ready for getting back on track in that focused fat loss goal, right? I don't like to call it a diet. I don't like to call it like It shouldn't be a full year thing that you're taking on. If you're specifically looking for fat loss in a very targeted, planned way, it really should be 16, 18, 20 weeks of focused fat loss. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we prepare ourselves for that? And we're going to talk about the three things that you need to do starting today. So let me just go back one second. One of the beautiful things that I always encourage my clients to take on during the summer is a little bit of using the three months, June, July, August, or July and August at least, the eight to 12 weeks, 
more or less like a reverse diet, right? Oftentimes people want to feel really good come the summer. And especially here in North America, in in Toronto, our summer really starts June, July, and then August. And then a little bit in September, but everyone's back to school in September. So kind of changes the energy. And the beauty of this time of year, the summertime, is that it gives you an opportunity to reverse diet. So we've spoken about this before, but let me just reiterate why it is so important. You don't want to be in a dieting phase or a fat loss phase or a fat loss plan through the entire year because your body is, like we've spoken about before, an adaptation machine. We adapt very, very well to the stressors and the situations that we put ourselves in. And if you are constantly in this fat loss phase, really pushing the envelope, not only are you more prone to injury, but you're going to find that you're not able to get the results that you want, right? especially for women in their 40s and 50s in that perimenopause era, it is really difficult to focus down for a long period of time. And you're going to find that your body rebounds and doesn't actually give you the results that you want. So summer is a perfect time. So where I want you to assess this conversation this conversation from is, am I coming out of a maintenance phase or a reverse diet phase. The reverse diet is really when you've been dieting for a long time, like low 1500 calories uh, of a diet, and you're finding that you're kind of stagnant or that you just need a break, right? You just need a break during the summer. Or you just need a break from constantly pushing the envelope. If you're feeling a little burnt out, if you're not getting the results that you want, whether it's in fat loss or the way that your physique looks, this is a perfect thing to take on right? And I'll do an episode on the reverse diet at the end of this series, actually. Um, But essentially, you're basically taking yourself out of the severe calorie deficit of, for example, 1500 calories, 1400 calories, and bringing yourself back out. Now, this isn't to say you're going to gain all the way back, because there is a science and a method to this madness. The impetus is that you're actually starting to add calories in, you're staying consistent with your resistance training, you're slowly removing your cardio if you've been doing a lot of cardio. So that your body doesn't just constantly adapt to keep storing fat and becoming efficient at burning fat and storing fat, right? And we're going to talk about some of those things in one second, but essentially you're taking yourself out of that severe caloric depletion, keeping your metabolism revving so that every week you're adding 50 to 100 calories to your nutrition so that eventually you bring yourself back up to 2000 calories and you're staying lean right? That's the goal. If you can maintain 2000 or more of daily caloric consumption and maintain your weight and not gain body fat, you may gain a little bit, but essentially you're eating way more and you're feeling really satiated and and satisfied. That is a huge win, right? So that's one of the things that knowing that you're ready to step into a planned fat loss focused time that's where you would want to be. Because the truth is, if you're already at 1400 calories, 1500 calories, and you're like, okay, I'm ready for a fat loss phase, it's going to be really difficult. You're going to deplete yourself significantly because if you're at 1400 calories, how far lower can you go? You can't. How much more cardio can you add in? Or if you're already adding your cardio, how much more resistance training can you add in if you're already doing four days a week? It's not going to be, it's actually counterproductive. And especially women our 40s and 50s, right? Because we are, our systems are quite sensitive to these factors. So let's talk about the three things that you can do starting today to getting, get ready to be on track in the next three, four weeks for your fat loss goals. Okay. Number one, how are your habits? This is a really uh, apparent one during the summer, but this can be any time of year, right? And this is where mindset and mindfulness really comes in. How are your habits currently around your nutrition? How are your habits currently around movement? Typically when people come to me, we do a little bit of an assessment of where are you right now? And here are the questions that you would ask yourself. Where are you right now with your nutrition, right? Are you eating consistently throughout the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, for for example, or are you sporadic with your nutrition? Sometimes you're not eating till noon. Sometimes you're eating a big breakfast, but it's donuts. Sometimes you're eating really late at night. Sometimes you're eating all over the place. Sometimes you're grazing all day, right? This is the function of the summer, right? That sometimes days are fluid with 
the flow of what is going on, whether you're at a cottage or vacation, or just life is a little bit more chaotic in a different way during the summer, right? Kids with activities or you're socializing more. So really looking first and foremost, what are your habits around your nutrition? And then break it down a little bit further. What are your habits around substance use, right? How much alcohol are you consuming? How much marijuana are you consuming? A lot of people, some people use, you know, alcohol recreationally, drinking every other day, every day during the summer. Where are you on those habits? And then looking at what are your movement habits? During the summer, it's a beautiful time to rest more and to relax more. Although it's easier to maybe get outside, are you actually getting the same kind of steps in when you were intentional during the fall, uh, the spring or the fall or wherever you're listening to this, right? So what do we do about this? Starting to add in the mindfulness and the awareness around what your practices are are really important as you prepare to get into your fat loss focus, because it allows you to take an accounting of where you are now and being like, huh, I'm actually drinking four days a week, right? Way more than optimally Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'll just talk about myself. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I'm eating way more sweets, way more processed food because we're a little bit more on the go. So we're grabbing and going and things like that. Um, and so my sugar consumption is way higher. I don't do any other drugs other than alcohol. So no marijuana use or whatever else, but look at those practices because sometimes those are the summer practices, right? You're more relaxed. You're enjoying with friends. You're celebrating life, whatever it is, check in with these things. And then as we add in mindfulness, you can start becoming more intentional. It doesn't mean stop at cold turkey, but it means like, okay, you know what? Maybe I can pull back this week and only drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday, only two glasses of something, right? And then next week I'm going to pull back to just Friday, Saturday, nothing on Sunday, right? Once you start bringing in this mindfulness and this intentionality, doesn't mean you cut it off and you can't actually enjoy, quote unquote, enjoy, but you bring in some intentional mindset that, you know what, I'm going to start cleaning up some of these habits so that when I'm ready to go, I can hit the ground running and it doesn't feel like such a cold turkey. Because although cold turkey works good for some, it isn't necessarily good for all, right? The psyche around this oftentimes feels like it is in severe deprivation. But if you can almost quote unquote wean yourself off of these habits, it really supports you in feeling like, oh, I can do this, right? I'm already down to alcohol only once or twice a weekend. So I can totally go down to one and then bring it out to zero for a period of time, right? Looking at nutrition, same kind of thing. What are your habits like? Can you start establishing a better routine during the week, especially that can support you long-term so you don't feel like you're constantly in this deprivation mode or that you're constantly in this indulging mode and then start to add in and become more mindful of filling up your plate with colorful food, of greens, of maybe taking out some of the processed food, adding in more veggies, Again, not to go full cold turkey, but just adding in that mindfulness and that intentionality with your in your week and being like, okay, can I actually meal prep for the week? Will I consume it, right? Because I know for us, we've been out more often. We're at friends or like, you know, every other day doing different things, but bringing in that intentionality of like, how am I going to nourish my body so that this supports me, okay? So that's the first thing, checking in your, checking on your habits and adding in those practices and the awareness so that you can start shifting things every single week. Okay. So that's number one. If you are actually looking for a kickstart way to just get yourself on track, my program is completely self-guided and it's also quite hand-holding, right? The 21 day kickstart, this gets you on track literally. So it's called the 21 day, but it literally over the course of four weeks resets your system and gets you back with these habits like we've just spoken about. Good? So the second thing that I want you to think about, about the three simple things that you can do starting today to reset your habits and to kickstart your fitness and fat loss phase is sleep. How is your sleep? And this is so relevant for all times of year and the summer. The summer is actually easier because 
in North America, especially the sun rises really early so we can get that bright morning sunlight and then the sun sets late. So it really trains your circadian clock to be like, oh, I can wake up early with the sun and oh, the sun is setting nine o'clock, 8.30, time to go to bed, right? But regardless of when you're listening to this, this is a really good time to look at how is my sleep? We all know that sleep is the cornerstone to wellness and health, especially in our 40s when we're looking to go from front bead to fit, when we're looking to really address the symptoms of perimenopause and to manage our hormones and our results that we get in our fitness and fat loss phase, sleep is so important. Like I mentioned before, our systems as women in our late 30s, 40s, and 50s are quite sensitive to and beyond, right? In our 60s also, but really when you're in that perimenopause phase, our systems are quite sensitive to stress. One of the things that is a big stressor is not getting adequate sleep. Summer or sometimes of years, we're just burning the candle at both ends, depending on work, on kids, on life. I want you to check in. How is your sleep? Are you consistently getting seven to nine hours of the recommended sleep time per night? And if not, that is something to look at. One of the things that I often talk about in this program, the 100 Day Fit Mind and Body, is looking at what are your sleep hygiene habits? What is your nighttime ritual that allows you to get into restful sleep? or at least a rested state and that calm state so that your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system can switch gears and get you into a nice sleep mode, right? So the reason why, the other reason why this is really important is that when you are lacking sleep consistently, it throws off so many things in menopause and perimenopause. It throws off your system in that it increases your cortisol. Cortisol is that stress response hormone that also signals your system to store fat or to not release body fat as efficiently as usual. And then it also plays with your hormones of the ghrelin and leptin hormone, which is your hunger and your satiety hormone to really tell your body like I'm hungry or not hungry, right? People that are not sleeping enough will find that their cravings are higher, that they're feeling hunger more often or for a longer period of time, or that when they've actually eaten, they don't feel satisfied that they're still hungry and craving food and wanting more calories, right? So sleep is super, super important to support your hormones during this time. One of the things that I want to also mention is that there's interesting research coming out in the forefront that also suggests that when you are in lack of sleep, resistance training can actually support you in managing your uh, glucose response in your system. When you're not sleeping well, everything gets out of whack, right? Your insulin resistance goes up, You your ghrelin and leptin get out of whack, your body's signaling to store fat or not release it, and you're just feeling exhausted, right? Like we all know that when we're in a state of exhaustion, it doesn't feel good. This isn't to say that you should be waking up at 5 a.m., every single day and just compromising sleep to get a workout in. This is saying that those days that you're feeling tired because you're like, oh, I only got six hours of sleep or whatever it is, do the workout anyway, right? We always think like, oh, I'm just going to rest because I didn't sleep last night, but do the workout anyway because the research is actually showing it's going to support you, which is that's the goal. How can we find this baseline during our day-to-day that will support us long-term? So there's a little tip for you, okay? Um. So what does sleep hygiene look like? Sleep hygiene looks like actually turning off your devices an hour before bedtime, doing calming activities, whether it's a bath or listening to soothing music, lighting a soothing candle, reading, turning off TV, uh, not answering emails, anything that isn't stimulating to your brain. And also they say dimming lights, right? Candlelight is what a lot of biohackers will say is the quintessential thing because from our caveman epigenetic perspective, that's all we had after dark to be able to light the way would be fires. So they actually say getting rid of blue light, getting rid of like bright fluorescent lights, right? And dimming it down really allows for your body to get in that rest and digest state. And we have to remember in sleep, it's not just that during our waking hours, we're going to feel better, less cortisol, 
better ghrelin and leptin balance and better glucose insulin response balance in our system. But this is the time when you're sleeping that your body's repairing, regenerating, allowing for fat loss to happen. There's so many um, detoxifying properties that happen in your system during sleep that it's really, really important. So it is this, you know, optimal benefit state that we prioritize sleep. So how are you prioritizing sleep? And when you can get sleep consistent, that can really support you when you're ready to step into a fat loss phase. In fact, I've been able to support clients in um, optimizing their sleep only, and that is enough for them to shed five to 10 pounds just out of the gates. Think about that. That's significant. Okay. The third thing I want to talk to you about today when we're thinking about the simple things that we can do to reset our habits and to kickstart our fat loss phase for busy women over 40 that are entering perimenopause is stress. I know stress is always a topic conversation. Stress is always something that we're all talking about in the fitness industry, but just in general, our lives are stressful. Even if you're listening to this when it was intended to come out in the summer and things are a little bit um, less busy, what I find with my clients is that they're just as stressed as usual. It just feels different, right? They're just as busy. Uh, life is stressful. And especially when you're ramping up literally two weeks before the start of school, people feel it already, right? That anxiety of like getting back to the routine, getting back to programs, getting back to school, getting back to work full tilt is the reality. And you can manage your stress with little things every single day. So I want you to think about what are you doing right now to manage your stress? How is your stress right now? Because if you're like, Catherine, I'm not feeling stressed. Actually, summer has been amazing. I've been resting a lot and summer feels great. That is amazing. And what are the practices you're going to continue on so that you can continue to feel good as things ramp up wherever you are in the world or wherever you are in the year. And as those um, considerations of busyness step up, right? As stress automatically comes back in. Because if you can maintain these stress management practices, when life actually does show up, like shit hits the fan and life gets busy, that will benefit you a ton. So what are st stress relieving activities that you can implement? Yes, going to the spa, is something that self-care is wonderful. But for my busy women, it really has to be practical, right? What can you actually fit in and make a priority for yourself that makes a difference? And why stress is so important is twofold. Number one, like I said, our systems are very sensitive as women going through menopause to these stress factors or in menopause. And that is just the way that we are wired. The challenge is when there are significant stressors in our lives and we're not managing it actively, it really wreaks havoc on our hormones. It wreaks havoc on that cortisol in our system. It wreaks havoc on the ghrelin, that hunger hormone, and it wreaks havoc on our body's ability to manage stress and therefore optimize health practices like resistance training, like the determination and the focus and the discipline to nourish your body well. Okay. So this is super duper duper important. Then the second thing about stress is that, okay, wait, I lost my train. So the second thing about stress is that there is always going to be stress in your life. It really is your responsibility to look at how can I not burn the candles at both ends? This is where mindset really comes in in some of our practices or a lot of the practices that we do in the 100 Day Kick Fit Mind and Body, really the fit mind part, because being able to hold boundaries and say no, saying no is a complete sentence, by the way, saying no so that you can fill your cup up is the best thing you can do for your health and well-being and for those around you, right? Because then you're not just burning the candle at both ends right? So stress management looks like actually taking the time for the things that you need, whether it's the movement practices, whether it's the meal plans, whether it's going for a five minute walk in the middle of your day to get outside grounded in nature. It is the five minutes that you can stand outside in your grass or grass anywhere to be, you know, grounded for a moment in your system. It is the five minutes of having a coffee before you're literally answering emails or running out for everyone else. It is all these things like slowing down, like taking out the cardio, going for a walk instead, 
being committed to walking every day, even 20 minutes, being committed to slowing down, sitting down when you eat a meal, being committed to breathing for five minutes a day, waking up literally guys, five minutes earlier in the morning. So you can connect a breath, connect to your gratitude practice and connect to yourself. Right. And if you really are looking to optimize and take it a step forward, Meditation is a beautiful practice. You can find a 10, a 15 minute guided meditation. And actually I've got a couple on Insight Timer that are free that you can just download the app and use it whenever you want, right? If you're willing to take it a step further, you can journal about what are the stressors and why you want to let them go. It can be as simple as that. And in fact, my, I'm not going to pull it out right now without ruining things. So my fitter mindset journal, right? It doesn't even have to be this. It could be the five minute journal. It could be a notebook that you can actually put in a little practice every single day that can support your stress response. So for example, this one is mine. We do a rise and shine morning intention setting, right? That you're purposely choosing an intention of how you desire to create your day writing down what your intention is. It just can be one sentence, one word of an intention. And then finding three things you're grateful for or you're in deep appreciation for. Then you're going to check in. What is the type of person that you are? I'm the type of person that can actually learn boundaries. I'm the type of person that can take care of herself. I'm the type of person that can become more mindful. I'm the type of person that can succeed at my fat loss weight, whatever it is, right? This also includes things like hydration so that you can remember to do these little things that your body will thank you, right? And then there's also a nighttime ritual before you say goodnight, before you say goodnight, right? Before you end your day, take a break, breathe in, find the power in pause, find greatness and gratitude and imagine what and who you desire to become, right? And then you go through you know, what were the great things of today? What worked for you today? What didn't work for you today, et cetera, et cetera, right? Anyway, using something like that, taking it a step further and really diving into that calmness, that mindset, that fat loss phase is super duper important. So just to recap, what are the three things that we're looking at? We're looking at checking in with your habits and adding in mindfulness, that awareness of what your practices are around alcohol, around food, around treats, around indulgences, around movement or lack of movement around all of that is super important because then you can bring in some intentionality of how can I change this, this habit slowly one week, one baby step at a time. Then the second thing to look at is how is your sleep right now? Is your sleep and your sleep practices hindering your fat loss results or feeling good in your body? If you can become more aware of that now and start implementing things now, that will really support you when you're ready for your fat loss phase. And then finally, stress. Stress is this undercover agent that is holding us back to feeling our best in our body, especially for busy women that are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, entering perimenopause or getting into full-blown menopause. So if you can look at your stress and then your stress regulating practices starting now, you can add in that mindfulness and start slowly, slowly adding in the things that will make a difference long term. I hope this episode served you. Please make sure you tone, tune in next week as we step into the second conversation around from B to fit, fast loss for women over 40, entering perimenopause and menopause. As always, if this supports you, please rate, review, and subscribe. I read every single review and share this with somebody that is in the same situation, a busy woman in their 40s that are going through menopause or perimenopause that would love to have these conversations that just help you stay on track. As always, I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.